want to take you somewhere where there's a 37 foot high monster lurking over the vast park, like a giant green Christmas tree. You may wonder where the cars are going. Excuse me. You may wonder where the cars that are passing by the monster are going. Are they headed to see a Japanese movie? Or are they headed to see this monster? Do you know this monster? Can you guess where this monster lives? If you guess the oldest ballpark in Major League Baseball, then you guess right. This monster lives at Fenway Park in Boston. Today I want to share some history. Let you in on some little known facts. And tell you more about the place someone once called a little band boss of a ballpark. I know a lot about Fenway Park, considering in my house we go at least once a year during the season to catch a Sox game, and in the off season. It is the oldest ballpark on the land. It comes with lots of history, unique traditions, and it's not just baseball. You might be thinking where Fenway Park got its name. Fenway Park got its name from being in the Fens neighborhood of Boston. The word Fens means marsh. The ballpark was built on marshy land between 1911 and 1912. The park stood out by itself. It was the only building there. From 1901 until 1911, the Red Sox played at Huntington Avenue grounds, but their owner, but their owner after the 1911 season, wanted a new ballpark just for the Red Sox. Because at the time, they were sharing that, that park with the Boston Braves. So in 1912, Fenway Park opened to an attendance of 27,000 fans with the Sox playing the New York Islanders, present-day New York Yankees. Boston won in 65. Boston played in several World Series in the early days of Fenway Park from 1912 to 1918. Then in 1919, no World Series would be won in Boston for many years to come. What about the Green Monster? The prelude to the Green Monster was the left field fence called Duffy's Club, which was originally erected to prevent fans from entering the field of play. This was named for Boston player Duffy Lewis. It also included a 10-foot-high mound that formed an incline in front of the left field wall. The fence was damaged by two fires in the late 1920s and 1933. The basic structure of the wall, as we know today, was built along with a green coat of paint and light towers during the 1947 season. That green coat of paint replaced an ag-covered wall that was previously there when the park opened. In Fenway's early years, no night games were played in Boston. It was not until 1947 that light towers were installed to make way for night baseball in Boston. The Red Sox were the third to last team to install lights. The first night game was played on June 13, 1947 against the Chicago White Sox. You can see the two light towers on top of the wall coming down I-90, the mass plate, as you approach the park. At present, there are no advertisements during the light tower to allow them to meet National Park Service standards because it is considered an historic landmark. Fenway Park has, has a lot of unique features, such as the pesky pole named for Red Sox player Johnny Pesk in right field, while in left field there's a pole named for Red Sox catcher Carlos and Fisk. The Fisk pole is 310 feet from home plate, while the pesky pole is only 302 feet, making it the shortest home run distance in MLB. There is also the triangle in center field, which is 420 feet away, and the CN has gone up significantly, significantly from 27,000 to 37,631. But it's still framed for the smallest, for a smaller figure from the early 20th century. The best seats are the Green Monster seats, which were built in 2003. The CN prices vary based on the time of year. There's also the press box, which was a small wooden area above home plate. For just newspaper writers, and then from 47 onward, TV crews began broadcasting, and now it's completely glassed in. So why Fenway? With its unique features, so much history, Fenway Park should be on everyone's bucket list. Even if you're not a baseball fan, Fenway always worked. Visit the park. I promise you will not be sorry.